On this episode, we discuss the art of managing your expectations as an expat and how that simple act can improve your life. So if you've ever found yourself frustrated at all the ways Thailand seems different from what you're used to back home, you'll dig this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawa de Krupp, and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 and still hoards 50 baht bills like they're a rare comic book and lets out a small, subtle, silent sigh whenever I have to use one. <laughs> 50 baht notes, man, they are, they are gold. They are. They're great. I have a special compartment in my wallet for them. <laughs> That's great. And I'm Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 23 years ago fell in love with basking in the glow of five customer service staff trying to help me at one time without a single one actually being able to help me. So I never left. This, this customer to staff ratio is, is low. I still feel important when a lot of people are helping me, even if none of them actually can help me. Right. Yeah. It still <laughs> makes me feel People I try to find me a special, like a cement nail or something like that. No, bro. <laughs> All right, we want to give a big thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get every episode a day early. Behind the scenes photos of our interviews, a heads up to send questions to upcoming guests, and access to our Discord server to chat with me, Greg, and other listeners around the world. But best of all, patrons also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and Bangkok topics. On this week's bonus show, we chatted about a fascinating and illegal new trend that combines Thai culture, religion, and artificial intelligence. Tread carefully. Hmm. The state of Thai roads after two road collapses in the same day in more or less the middle of Bangkok. And the horrific news that elephant pants are becoming legitimately fashionable. No. No way. No, no way can I accept that. To learn how to become a patron, click the support button at the top of our website. Right. And as always, if you have a comment, a show idea, or just want to say hi, head to BangkokPodcast.com and click the little microphone button on the bottom right to leave us a voicemail that we'll play on the show. Alrighty then. Well, on this episode, we wanted to riff on something that Ed and I were talking about earlier, which is finding your happy place as an expat in Thailand. Now, obviously... Things seldom work here like we have grown up expecting them to work, and this can often cause quite a bit of friction and anger even, with a stereotypical image of an expat yelling, why don't you do it like this, and a Thai yelling right back at them, if you don't like it, go home. Well, first of all, for many, like Ed and I, this is home. And second, this is actually something that any expat anywhere needs to come to grips with. Originally, the title of the show was Lowering Your Expectations, but we quickly realized that's not a very nice or accurate thing to say. In fact, Thailand does a ton of things way better than anywhere I know back home. Food, movie theaters, electronic payments. So we changed it to Managing Expectations, and that is learning to understand that the key to happiness while living overseas can, unsurprisingly, be found within rather than without. But Ed, this was uh, something that you originally brought up because of a, of a conversation you had. So I want to learn a bit more about that. What's going on? Yeah, I just happened to uh, have a conversation with a, a new teacher at my university. Uh, and he's not a total newbie to Thailand. He's He was kind of a repeat expat and he just took a, a teaching job in Thailand. It may end up being short term, uh, but he's certainly uh, uh, relatively new compared to the veterans that you and I are. And I was chatting with him. I was chatting with him, and I, you know, giving him advice as uh, I am wont to do. And I, you know, I, I kind of said what you said, but I never really framed it that way. You know, I said something. I said something like, you know, dude, the, you know, the key to being happy here is just managing your expectations and knowing what to expect, and then being happy if things exceed them. Um, but that was the key. And then later, I. I, I realized, well, I never kind of put it that way before. Hmm. Uh, and I think as you been, as you and I have been here a long time and you, we have a lot of friends who've been here a long time, you kind of learn not to feel so disappointed when certain things happen because 
they've happened many times before and you just learn, okay, this is not a Thai thing or Thai people don't value this thing that I grew up with. And we just learn to adapt and adjust. And so I think this is a good idea for a show. And I think it's a good, uh, a good way to frame how to figure out how to be happy here. Um, and uh, our, our buddy Scott before on the show has said, you know, you, you really should not be trying to change Thailand. Like that's part of the, the right. fallacy of the, the fallacy of the newbie. The fallacy of the beginner is to kind of wrestle with Thailand and try to make it what you want it to be or what you're maybe used to back home. Uh, and I, I, agree, I agree with him that that is uh, not the right path. Like you're not, I don't think we're, we're going to change Thai people or change Thai culture or change Thailand. Um, and that doesn't mean we have to um, like everything. You know, that's not what we're saying. We're not saying uh, just accept things that are unacceptable. You know, there's certain things that you should say, hey, this is wrong or I don't agree with that. Right. But I, I just mean day to day. You know, I, I realized that, and you know, after I, explain this to uh, my, my new friend about managing expectations. And then you and I chatted about this idea. I realized that I am doing this all the time, but I didn't realize I was doing it. You're managing expectations about everything. Yeah. I realized that a lot of things, you know, my, my famous rule of five, where I assume that five taxes will say no to me. Right. This, right, right. this is, this is my, you know, I, 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 I picture this as like, I'm being Zen. And, you know, I'm, you know, I, I think this is some psychological trick I've learned, but it really, it's just managing expectations. That's all it is. It's like, I, you know, I've been frustrated so many times and went through years of bitterness and anger at these damn cabs. Slamming do, taxi doors, yelling at them as they drive away. Yeah, they won't do their job. Like they have a little sign in front that says they're free, but then they won't go you want where you want to go. And of course, you can be angry about it all you want. You can, you can rage all you want. But that doesn't help. And, and I, eventually I learned to manage my expectations, although I've never really framed it that way before, uh, where it's just, I just tell myself, I mean, it, it, it happened today, this afternoon. I, I had to get a taxi um, on Prat Hit Road, which is unfortunately fairly close to Khao San. And right. the closer you get to tourist areas, the more uh, jerkish taxi drivers, <laughs> the, you know, the more, the more, the more, jerkish taxi drivers get. So I went through this experience where I just did it today where I was, I just said to myself, okay, you know, the first five guys are going to say no. And then I think around the fourth guy said yes. And so then yeah, you know, I, I went I, up. Uh, that's right. So I, I've managed my expectations. And um, like you said, I think I, I do this actually a lot and it's really, uh, in a way it's a type of wisdom and, you know, from you just, no one wants to be angry and bitter all the time. So eventually you learn to, to, you know, you learn to think about what's probably going to happen and then gauge your, your expectations accordingly. I mean, does <laughs> yeah. this, does it make sense? Well, first of all, is that Roti Motaba place on uh, Pratit still open? It still is near the corner. Sure. Good. Opposite awesome. Ford. Love it. Yeah. Excellent Roti almost directly across the fort. Across the fort. Uh, I don't know if it's called, uh, I think it might be called Samson Fort. I'm not sure what the name of that fort is. Is so it the white, Yeah, Prasumen Fort. Maybe that's correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah, not Samson. Prasumen Fort, correct. The yeah. white structure, just almost directly across is a great roti place for sure. Oh, chicken drips off the bone. Anyway, getting sidetracked. Um, you know, it's funny because, yeah, I do this a lot too. Now, whenever I, uh, I'm about to call a Thai company, like, or if I have to do some bureaucracy or go into, like, you know, do some customer service at a big Thai industry or something like that. I always stop first. <sighs> All right. You're going to get a lot right. more done if you smile. Don't become the angry Farang. Oh, Farang smash. You know, so <laughs> I, I am managing expectations as well. And I, yeah, I never, I've never phrased it that way before. I always sort of flippantly said it's my own form of yoga where I have to right. sort of <laughs> work to lower exactly. my blood pressure. Exactly. But the, the, the fascinating thing about it as you pointed out in the intro, is that it's very easy to fall into the trap of, and this is a really dangerous trap, and I, I mean this legitimately, it's a dangerous trap just to say, hey, things are worse here. So, yeah, you know, I've just got to lower my expectations and that's the way to be happy. But that 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 is false. And, you know, you and I are not 
Thai apologists. We're not, we're not, we, we don't candy coat Thailand. We, 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 that's our motto is to try to keep things real. The bottom line is there's a lot of things here that are straight up better, especially if you look at it from the perspective of maybe where you came from. So for example, you know, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. It's a, it's a big city, but nowhere near as big as Thailand. So it's about a million people or so. Um, and we just have super lame mass transit. We kind <laughs> Same of, in Calgary, where I'm yeah, from. Yeah, we kind of we kind of ha- we kind of have a subway, but it's kind of one lame line, and it just Bangkok just destroys. Actually, mm. it destroys most American cities. I mean, I think there are some American cities that have newer, more modern public transportation, but I'm gonna I'd have to think about it. You know, New York has. Uh, a very vast subway system. It's just super old now. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to guess that uh, I'm, this is a question out there for Americans. Uh, does any city in the U S have better mass transit than Bangkok? I, I think the answer might be no. Um, you know, so the MRT and BTS, especially with all the extensions, it just destroys, I think American yeah. cities, but, but you know, the bottom line is I've been here 20 years. So Americans out there, if you can name a city with better, like cleaner, more modern, more efficient, cheaper public transportation, like let, let us know. So I, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, so, I mean, I guess Washington DC's uh, system is not bad. You know, I've used that. Right. It's not bad. To, to be uh, fair though, I mean, America is famously pretty bad with its mass transportation system, rail system. If you compare well, it to a, a city in Europe, then. Well, that's my, I mean, I, I guess that's my whole point. I think there is, a, there is, a, it's easy to be sloppy and, and to think, oh, everything's better back home, but, the, you know, Thailand has its charms, but it's, it's less developed. But that's not true. Like, especially Bangkok. You know, Bangkok is, you know, I've, you know we've done shows with, you know, economists before. Bangkok is very first world. Like, Bangkok is mm-hmm. not undeveloped. Bangkok is not developing. Like, it, it is developed. Right. Um, so there's certain things that I think are just straight up better here. Um, I think mass mass transportation is just straight up better than probably anything in the U.S. There's another way in which I had to sort of swallow my pride the other day and realize that uh, my awesome way of doing it probably was not the right way. And I had to, again, manage my expectations and, 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 and sort of swallow my pride a little bit. I'm a real fast walker. And for a long, long time, decades, I was always arriving at places first sweating, you know, <laughs> dripping sweat and then standing in the air con or the fan or something like that, waiting for people to catch up to me. And they'd saunter in Thai people. They'd saunter in not sweating right. at all. And of course they're probably right. more, more used to the heat than I am, but still the point is there's, you know, we complain about Thais walking slowly all the time, but it's right. No, <laughs> that's a, a great note. I t- Dude. I love that example. I love that example <laughs> because there's a lot of things here that can seem very frustrating but there actually is some wisdom behind it. Right. You know, what in the end you don't have to agree. You can still, you know, you do you, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to walk fast, you can. Yeah. But uh, there's reasons why in a sweltering climate people tend to <laughs> not not walk fast. Uh, that, that that that's a that's actually a really good example. Yeah. Um, the the other thing that's fascinating is, you know, when it comes to high technology, uh, computer stuff, internet. You would kind of just assume, okay, so you know the U.S. is going to be it's going to be ahead of Thailand, or Canada is going to be ahead, but that's yeah. not always true either. Um, maybe uh, average internet speeds, I'm guessing, are faster in the U.S. than Thailand. But there's other things uh, when it comes to technology that I think Thailand is clearly better. Um, I've had funny interactions with my buddies back home when I show them my banking apps, my Thai banking apps, right. and I show them how I get SMSs every time there's a deduction from my account, and it just you know pops up on my phone. And I think they, could, I think you probably could do that in the states. I'm not saying it's not possible, but I think in general, uh, electronic payments, e-banking, uh, QR codes, um, uh, transferring money. You know, half the time I'm in a cab now. The guy just has his QR code on the back of the seat. And so I, it's just easier for me just to, I don't even have to reach into my pocket. It's almost like I'm too lazy to open up my wallet. Even if I have the cash, I'll just go <laughs> beep, beep. I'll just go beep, beep. And I just pay him like through a QR code. Um, uh, so I think, I think just elect, like e-money, electronic payments, 
prompt pay, uh, electronic banking. I think it's better here than in the States. Totally. Yeah. I was actually out on a bike ride with, uh, with our buddy Andrew uh, last weekend and he was saying he had some friends in town from Canada and he was walking around. Oh, you want some Somtam? Beep. You want to uh, buy a, oh, right. a pair, pair right. of shoes? Even vendors, Beep. Right. Even, right. Even vendors on the streets now you yeah. can, you can, you can QR, you can QR yeah, code you go, them. go out for lunch with someone. Hey, your half was 250 baht. Beep. And they were like, oh my God, you're just doing this like second nature. It doesn't cost you anything. He's like, no, of course not. You just transfer money. And they're that's like, right. Wow. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So that, that's why I think that uh, it, it is correct to call it managing expectations. You just have to uh, learn through experience what type people are good at or not good at compared to where you came from. Hmm. But this leads to another twist. Um, Sometimes you have something uh, such as customer service where sometimes you can get frustrated by the way tired people do it. And th- and you can think, hey, they're just doing it worse. But actually, I think the definition of customer service or what is good in Thailand is actually just different. So w- what they mean by customer service is not always what we mean based on what we're used to. Oh, all right. I want to explain that a bit more. I don't get it. Okay. So, my, like, my my frustration sometimes with Thai customer service is I just can't find anyone who can answer my question. And so what I what I want or what I expect is, I don't know, I guess I just, I just want competence or knowledge or I want an expert. So I think that's right. what, I think that's what we expect. You know, I go into right. a computer store in the States and I want a guy there who works who knows more than me. Yeah. Or I go I go into a, a mobile phone shop and I don't understand, you know, in the States, I don't really understand mobile phone packages. I'm not used to it. I haven't lived for 20 years. So I just want someone to explain to me, like, how do I get mobile phone service? How much is it going to cost me per month? And, you know, what I'm looking for is kind of an expert. And mm-hmm. here's the bottom line. In Thailand, customer service is mostly about attitude. That That's mm-hmm. what, like, they... The, for them, being helpful is just mean they want to help, and it's just about kindness and warmth and a smile, and we're here That's to help. Really interesting. And, and it's just how they define it. And again, I'm not saying you have to agree that that is good customer service. You can still say, no, no, no. Hey, I just want someone who's an expert. That's fine. But what we're what you and I are trying to tell people is manage your expectations. So, so you, you think that the Western customer service is more about results? It's more, well, it, it's more, I think it's more about expertise. Of course, warmth and professionalism matter, but it's more about customer service is about, there's some guy in the store that knows more than you, and he's going to just answer the question and solve the problem like very quickly. Uh, and of course, they're going to be polite, but it's not about their smile mm. or their kindness. Yeah. Where, whereas I think, you know, I, you know, you and I have talked about this many times where you walk into a Thai store and, you know, there's, you know, the, 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 the customer to, to service ratio is five to one. So they have five people to help you. But then <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of times it takes 20 minutes. You got five people and it still takes 25 minutes for them to figure out the answer to your question. So <laughs> I'm not saying like there's something wrong with you if you're frustrated. I've been there a million times where right, right. I would just rather have one person who knows the answer to the question. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but I mean that's that's what we're trying to get across is that I think in in Thailand just what they mean by customer service is just people who are trying to help you and they're being very nice about it. It's just it's going to take some time. <laughs> to, to that's a, that's a really interesting insight. I've never heard it put like that, that way before. Yeah, it's that's just about. what they mean. What they mean by customer service is we're here to help. But the bottom, it, and again, you can't blame people. You know, I've, I've I learned this years ago. It's um, it's it, it, you, you, a lot of customer service, service people. They're not, not trained well by what we're used to, and so you can't blame them. You know, you you mm. can't blame them that no one gave them proper training, what we would call proper training. And so I've just, I've, I've learned to just, like you said, it's like I, I take a deep breath and I just say, okay, this is probably going to take more time than I think it should, <laughs> you know, but at least I'm going to have some people who really are trying to help me. 
Right. So you're saying like if you have four people helping you and it takes 30 minutes to find an answer, <laughs> that's like that's like 120 service minutes that you got there, right? So that's more. That's right. Like, that's more right. service versus one guy helping you in eight minutes. So you've got eight service minutes versus 120 service minutes. Therefore, the ties blow the old right. customer service out of the water. That's interesting. In some ways, I mean, but I love that. this is kind of this is kind of the you know the purpose of our, our our show tonight is just that you do have to adjust your expectations and 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 understand you know, like kind of see it from the tie perspective that what they think they owe you is an attitude, you know, mm-hmm. that, that, that's what customer service is. It's an attitude. Hey, we got five people here who are really willing to help you. That that's it. That's, that's valuable. What they're provi- that's what they're providing, you know? Interesting. And, um, uh, and again, it, it, you know, it may not be what we're used to and it can be frustrating at times when things take longer than you think, but this is Thailand, you know, so you live here. So, you know, so the the wiser thing is to not try to change them or force right. what you what you think customer service should be, and and trying to force that on Thailand. It's better just to walk in the store and just enjoy the fact that you have some super nice people who really want to help you. Like yeah. just just revel in that, revel in the attention of five <laughs> people scrambling around All those- trying to. Who really, they really want to help you. They really want to answer your question. Just they a do. golden shower of service minutes. Bathe in it and enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd call it a golden shower. That's a little, that's going a little bit too far. But I, well, but I get your idea. <laughs> well, I was uh, Googling around a little bit just in the uh, lead up to this episode. And I found this website, uh, this ChristineHarrisTherapy.com website. And she wrote a little bit about expectations as an expat. And this is a little bit woo-woo and a little bit uh, psycho babble, but I actually found her to be quite succinct. And let me just read a couple of quick paragraphs here. She says, expectations are what we think should happen. Expectations undermine who we are, who others are, and what is. It's the ideal, not the reality. As soon as we begin fantasizing about our new lives, a new experience, anything that is new, we create a vision in our minds that may or may not come true. This opens the door to lots of disappointment and lots of hurt feelings. Fantasies of a perfect world are controlled by what you perceive as fair and ideal will predictably leave us drained and dissatisfied. Expectations aren't what will happen. Expectations aren't based in reality, nor are they accurate forecasts for the future. Nothing should happen. The real world is messy and there is a lot of luck involved. Everyone is faced with challenges and injustices. We will not be able to control what happens, but we will be able to change how we react and interact. We will be able to grow and learn better ways to cope and make beneficial changes to our life. There you go. All right, Greg, do you, do you want a hug now? I'm not saying no to it, but... Uh, we, we can do a virtual... Well, can we can do a virtual hug over right. our, our Facebook call. No, actually, from that, um, I love that, <laughs> I love that um, little line, nothing should happen. Yeah, I, you're not I, I like anything. That. That's right. No, I love that actually because this is the whole point. Is you know, you walk into a store and you have an expectation. This should happen. I should have an expert who can, in the next thirty seconds, answer my question exactly. That's right. what should happen. But um, I like this attitude that there, there's really no predefined way things have to go. Right. Uh, it might you might be used to a certain thing from where you came from or back home, but you're not back home. And so there, there's no there's no basis to say that if it doesn't go my way, then something's wrong. Then it's wrong. Yeah, um, it's, it's A or B. There's nothing in between. Yeah, I mean it's not wrong. It's just the the Thai way of doing things. And um, you know, I mentioned earlier that, that that doesn't mean you have to you have to say that. Like for example, on the on the uh, bonus show, uh, we talked about um, uh, <laughs> you know sections of Sukhumut Road collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 you and I are not trying to say like, yeah, we just got to accept that. Hey, the, the road might collapse under you, under you and you might die. What are you going to do? This is Thailand. You just got to <laughs> accept it. You just got to accept You just got to manage he, your expectations. That's what he dude. said as he disappears into the sinkhole. T-I-T. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, not, we're not saying like, you must accept everything. You must accept horrible things. That is not the point. What we're talking about is just managing your day and, and having a less stressful day. Right. Um, you know, and, and dealing, you know, for example, you talk about 
the bureaucracy of Thai banks and things like that. And it's just the, the, the right way to approach it is to, is to have some wisdom or to benefit from our wisdom, what we, what, what we try to get out based on our, you know, tw- 20 years of individ- each Benny being more than 20 years is just to, just to learn from what's happened in the past right. and then use that to gauge how you think are going to go and just see the, the, the good side of what's happening like the like the bottom line is Thai customer service staff they really want to help like yeah. they, they really do they they right. really do like right. i just just happened to me many times where i just have three or four people standing in front of me and all they want to do is help right like they're tr- like they're that's, not they're not being very helpful but they're trying <laughs> well they might not be very helpful just yeah <laughs> sometimes they are but it it's, it's just you know but it's just like there is value in the fact that, hey, like they really care. Like, That's a good way to look at it. There is value in what they're doing. It might not be yes, what you there expected. Is. That's right. Uh, it's value. I, but you should, you should just adjust. And you should just like, you should just say to yourself, okay, this might take 30 minutes. It should take five. <laughs> That's right. You've got to manage your expectations. Now, as we're wrapping up here, all this being said, I will say I do draw the line. And when the phone rings and you say, hello, and then someone says, hello, <laughs> like there is a, a a widely agreed upon way when which phone calls are to go. If you say hello, the other person says hello. This is blah blah blah. I'm calling about blah blah blah. That's I'm right. Unwilling, I'm unwilling to budge on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think yeah, right, yeah. I, I think they're getting thrown off when they realize you're you're for wrong, and then they don't they don't know what to do at that point. Just, just hang up. They're just click. frozen. Been there they're, just, they're, they're just frozen. No, uh, <laughs> yeah. The point the point is is is. We don't have to accept everything, but uh, if you want to be happy here, uh, you have to learn from experience, learn from either your own wisdom or our wisdom, and um, just not lower your expectations, but manage them, and you'll be a, a much happier uh, expat or repeat tourist. I'm down with that. What a nice note to end on. Let's leave it at that. Heck yeah. All right. Well, we ask our listeners to send us a voicemail using the little microphone button on our website if they have something to say. And this week we heard from Stefan in Australia. Nice. Hey, Greg. Hey, Ed. It's Stefan calling or leaving you a message from Melbourne in Australia. I was just talking to a mate of mine and he was telling me about the visa has changed for not only tourists, but if you want to retire or spend some retirement time in Thailand and I'm curious I don't know much about visas so if you've done something recently I've missed it if not maybe give us a bit of a update on options for visas in uh, both visiting and spending longer than more than a couple of months in Thailand all the best thanks guys oh thanks for the message Stefan that's a really good question and I mean right off the bat We usually try to avoid these kind of things because as soon as we come out and say, oh, they changed it to 12 days now, and then three days after the show drops, they change it back to 10 days or whatever, and it's immediately out of date. So we we, we usually avoid uh, putting stuff like this on on the podcast. That being said, though, the the only changes that I know of recently is that uh, Indian nationals and Chinese nationals now have visa exemptions. They get a visa on entry. Or right. something like that. They relaxed that to increase tourism. And I also read something recently, and I just looked this up. This was uh, from August of this year. The Thailand elite membership packages are going to be increased. The price is going to go up. The, um, man, they keep changing those elite things. I mean, it, it, if I have any advice when it comes to visa stuff, it's just kind of expected to change. And so you, you've got to be really current with your information. Yeah, you got to manage your expectations, some would say. But, wow, um, <laughs> who would say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's very meta. Yeah, but those those are the only things I know. And actually, I've got a friend visiting now from Europe, and um, he reminded me that the, the rules changed a while ago, which is if you're crossing by a land border, you only get a 15-day extension to an existing visa. But if oh, you're coming right? by, by air, it's 30 days. So, yeah. Um, sorry, Stefan, we're, we're not really the guys to go to for like up-to-the-minute visa regulations but, yeah, we're uh, more for the like once you've been here five years, we're the guys to talk to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're work permit questions and all the the bureaucracy and paperwork that goes with that. We can tell you about that. But uh, yeah, my advice, man, just uh, you know, get online and and go to some reputable sites and send a bunch of messages and emails and stick to. That's uh, right. 
I think a couple of government Thai government sites have pretty good mess, uh, information about that stuff too. But again, it's, it's not a pool we swim in regularly, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, but thanks for the question, man. Okay, a final thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling, knowing that they're helping in our never-ending quest for cool content. Find out more by clicking support on our website. And connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. That's right. You can also listen to each episode on YouTube. You can send us a voicemail just like Stefan did through our website that we'll feature on the show. You can hit me up on threads at BKK Greg. Other than that, we're going to go see you back here next week, folks. Take care. For sure. It's, it'll be, it'll be. I still, I. Still, it'll be more sensitive. Yeah. It'll pick up more background noise, but I just think they're cool. I want one of those big condenser mics, like the large capsule condenser mics. I want one. I want to get the Shure SM7B. Those are nice mics. Those they are. are all the pro podcasters have. Yeah, they're like eighteen thousand baht or something. I think the the Rode was not expensive. I thought. I think it's like ten or twelve. I mean, so more than I should pay because this one's just fine. Um, but I just yeah. like those. I just like those big mics. There's something cool. About a big. You get a ribbon mic like uh, Johnny Carson had on his desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are cool. You know that the old jazz singers used to use. Yeah, very cool. Hundred thousand baht. Need more patrons. All right.